Welcome back. Got a different one today going for a different sort of amplifier. Did the Yamaha the other day, did the Aowa before that. Today we've got a different one. It's a small amplifier, Class D, sort of thing that you might buy for just using around the house. It's going to be interesting. Let's have a look at it. Okie dokie, this is the one we're going to go with. This is a nice little amplifier. I saw it on the internet. I was looking to do a how to connect up your amplifier video. Well, this is what I came up with when I was looking for an amplifier. And it will feature in the other video. But in the meantime, I thought it would be quite interesting to do the comparison between this one and the Yamaha, which of course relates to the Aowa video that I did. There's connections there all over the place. Okay, so looking at this here, it says it's a Dayton Audio 2.1 mini amplifier and it's $265. That's Australian dollars, by the way. So in English pounds, it's about uh, just over 130 pounds. It looks quite nice, it looks pretty functional. We've got on here, if we just highlight this, the back panel, we've got um, RF in, AUX 2, AUX 1, right and left, power, speaker left, right, right, left and sub, hmm, okay, they're the speakers, and then you've got your input, right, left and auxiliary which is presumably on a 3.5 millimeter we will have a look and see right let's scroll down nice picture not sure exactly what it means but it's a nice picture right so then we get to the description and it says 50 watt stereo with adjustable crossover frequency and 100 watt, watt subwoofer amplifier right must get the teeth in daytone Audio 2.1, 200 watt mini amplifier is the description. The Daytone Audio DTA what is a discrete whole system amplifier that provides output for two speakers and a passive subwoofer. The design allows you to create a compact 2.1 setup for virtually any room, whether it be an office, bedroom, or even a small home theater. The two times 50 watt output power is more than enough for most bookshelf speakers. And the subwoofer output of 100 watt is ideal for a small subwoofer. 100 watts is pretty good for a big subwoofer. Anyway, the reason the DBD is able to produce this exceptional power in such a small package is the Class D topography that is being utilised. The amplifier technology also provides high efficiency for a low power draw on your electrical system. And what that means is, quite simply, it's a Class D amplifier, which is about 98% efficient. So all of the power that you put into the amplifier is used to drive the speakers. Remember that, we're gonna get onto something in a minute. The DTB features the three most popular audio inputs, 3.5 millimeter stereo RCA, and of course Bluetooth. Uh, there's a 3.5 millimeter RCA inputs that are found on the rear. The Bluetooth connectivity is extremely convenient for wireless audio playback and is a key feature for any audio enthusiast. I should think very good. Right, then we get to the nitty gritty. The front plate of it features three knobs providing a gentle tactile feel. The first knob on the left provides control over the subwoofer output, which is apparently adjustable. The second knob is a tone control that allows you to attenuate the sonic signature of the The second knob is a tone control that allows you to attenuate the sonic signature of your speakers. Well, you can either boost the bass or boost the treble. The final and largest knob is the volume control located on the right of the faceplate. The front plate also features an adjustable crossover frequency to fine tune your system. 50 hertz, 120 hertz. There is a discrete push button power switch source selector located on the front of the unit on the left hand side. The whatever it is, aesthetics offers you an attractive black aluminium case that is easy to be focal point of your 2.1 system. It does look quite nice. I'll give them that. Power output, 50 watts times 2. Power output, subwoofer, 100 watts. Sub crossover, between 50 and 120 hertz. Impedance, between 4 and 8 ohms. Total harmonic distortion, 0.4% at 25 watts per channel. And it says approximately 5% at rated power output. Now 0.4% to 5% is quite a big step. 
However, 0.4% is quite large in the first place. Amplifier input voltage, 24 volts DC. Amplifier input amperage for amps. We're going to come back to that. Going to come back to that. Power supply voltage, 100 volts to 200 volts VAC. So it says amplifier input amperage, 4 amps. Power supply voltage is that. And power supply amperage is 2 amps. Class Amplifier class D. Texas Instruments chipset. Bluetooth compatibility. Bluetooth distance up to 30 meters, which is good. And the dimensions, 40 by 130 by 150 millimeters. It's not very large. Hasn't got a weight on it. But compared to the Yamaha I was looking at, which weighs 50 pounds, oh, I think this is going to be a bit of a lightweight. Well, well, there we go. Let's have a look now. See where we go from here. That is it. It's the specifications. But let's see if we can pick uh, the numbers a bit. It says on the front of it, there's a... So you've got all your switches on there, which are nice. Yeah, no problem there. And then it says power DC, 24 volts. So it hasn't got a proper power socket on it. It must have a wall wart. So it says 24 volts, made in China. And it says on here it's a 100 watt class D2. Now, I am of the opinion that watts is watts. If you think about it, and watt is watt. Now it says on here that the amplifier input voltage is 24 volts. So let's bring up a quick calculator. So, amps times volts equals watts. For those who don't know it, that's the formula. Amps is 4. Multiply it by the volts, which is 24. That equals 96 watts. So, if this is a class D amplifier like it says it is, the maximum it can be running it would be about 90 watts. So, that's 90 watts output. Hmm. So, where do they get their figures from? Because we've got 90 watts is available. Well, 2 times 50 watts would be 100 watts. But I think they're talking um, probably peak music power. I think you'll probably find that seeing as it's then saying here that at 25 watts per channel it's 0.4% on the total harmonic distortion. I think this is all talking about, this is all peak watts, not RMS watts. So there's no way you could drive a 100 watt amplifier plus the 250 watts amplifiers for only 96 watts. Let's do a very quick bit of maths then. Let's see how we go. So if it's 100 watts peak music power, so we multiply that. So that's a peak to peak music power. So we multiply 200, 200, multiplied by 0 0.707 equals 141. Divide that by 2, and that equals 70, 70 watts, 70.7 70 watts, which would be about right. So it's reasonable to say that. Or put it another way, just half of what the numbers say, and that's roughly right. That's how these people do it. There's nothing wrong with it. They're not lying. You just have to know what it means. Interesting little piece of kit that, at the end of the day, it hasn't got any tape input and outputs and it's never going to be what you'd call hi-fi, but it's good enough for just bombing around with, you know, you can just do a bit of this and a bit of that. Anyway, like, subscribe, share, all those good sort of things and I'll catch you later.